was a mediocre God, he would deserve a mediocre praise. And I, if he was an average God, we will give him an average praise. But because he is almighty God, we have to glorify and praise his holy name. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. And at a whole, thank you for your words of introduction. A father of three sons, I have a Gideon, an Emmanuel, and a Daniel. The Lord has been good to us. And I would like to give a special thanks to Pastor Herbert, a colleague and friend of mine for many years. I got a call this morning that he's unable to be here. And I ask that we continue to pray for him and his father, Brother Herbert, who I know quite well. And when I drop my boy off to university, at least I do go there and be sure I get something to eat. I always feel welcome. And I just ask that we continue to pray and lift the man of God up. You know, we're not going to have a strong family because we are the pastor or the elder of the church. Uh, Satan will not always leave us. Uh, this is a battlefield, and we need to know that. It's not a playground. It's a battlefield. But we are sure that a victory is ours by the grace of God. I have a few acquaintances and friends in the congregation. And for our guests, I say feel welcome. It's no coincidence or accident that you are here today. God has a message for you and for me as well. And I pray that we would be blessed as we take counsel from his word today. I'm going to ask you, perhaps you don't do that, but my focus is on one verse, and I'm going to ask you to stand and read that with me. Um, Hebrews 6, verse 19. If you wouldn't mind, please stand together with me as we read this verse. Hebrews 6, verse 19. All together, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Please be seated. Uh, just in case you report to the pastor that the preacher didn't move you, I just made you move by standing with me to, to read the scripture. And I asked the elder, and um, what time do we finish? And I was told, uh, you can go to one o'clock. And then I was told you have to finish at 1245. But I know the preacher's beatitude, which says that blessed is he who shall preach a short sermon, for he shall be invited to preach again. So since I want to come back, I'll keep to the time. I ask that the Lord will, will bless us as we speak his word today. Let us ask his permission as we go into his word. Lord, I ask that you will think through my mind and speak with my mouth the feeble lips of clay and let your word never return to you void. And I pray for Pastor Herbert who is now by the sick bed of his ailing father, that you will grant healing mercies and comfort and care at this time. We bring before you the family. Let your will be done in the enfeeblement of old age. Let the faith hold on to the anchor. And now as I proclaim your word, I ask that you will move by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hebrews 
chapter 6. Uh, some years ago, the story I read indicates that a missionary group had gone to the island of Trinidad and Tobago to proclaim the word of the Lord. And when they got there, they went to one of the remote villages. And whilst the preacher was standing up asking for special items of music, many called their favorites, and then he saw a lady in a wheelchair. She turned around and visibly raised her right hand which had no fingers on. Her nose was almost gone. The twisted lips and she boldly emphatically said my special item of music is count your blessings and name them one by one. When upon lies billows, you are tempest-tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you to see what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your blessings. Every doubt will fly. And you will keep singing as the days go by. When you look at others with lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your blessings and name them one by one. Now, as they started singing this song, which we know quite well, the evangelist missionary left the podium. Uh, they found him crying. Grown men do cry. Shedding tears, which welled up his eyes. And so his people asked him, what is wrong with you? Have you taken ill? He said, no. Did you just hear what that lady requested? A leprosy had taken over her body. But although the sickness had ravaged her body, made her a hollow of a human being, she still has praise for the good God. I'm saying this day that it's not what happens to us on the outside, but what is on the inside of us. Uh, coming to church should not be like going to the dentist for tooth ext extraction. Because praise is comely. And we have come here to honor the great God for his great work among his people. And so, in case you are here and discouraged, Hebrews chapter 6 is your chapter. It is a chapter that begins with warning to those who have been on the trail. Uh, the pilgrims who have on the journey felt that it does not pay to serve the Lord anymore. But it ends with the blessed assurance. And that is a song that was sung so beautifully by faith. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know that says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I have proved him over and over again. It is so sweet to trust in, in Jesus. And the sermon title, as you know, The Anchor Holds. The anchor is one of the instruments very important on a ship. You can have whatever size of ship you have, but without an anchor, 
that that ship will not reach its destination. The anchor is a synonym, a symbol of hope. And so the writer to the Hebrews uh, says in chapter 6 verse 19, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the other of Melchizedek. Epictetus says that a ship should never depend upon one anchor or a life on one hope. And Pythagoras said that wealth is a weak anchor, a fame is still weaker. What then are the anchors which are strong? The wise philosopher says wisdom, great heartedness, courage. These are the anchors which no storm can shake. Paul insists that we Christians must possess and should possess the greatest of all hope in the world. And that hope is Jesus. Now we sing the song, in times like this, we need an anchor. In times like this, we need a Bible. In times like this, we need a savior. Charles Dickens in his epic tale, The Tale of Two Cities, says this, it was the best of times, yeah, it was the worst of times. It was a season of hope and a season of despair. I don't need to enumerate and to account for you what you see on your television. An indication that this is not home. We are just passing through. And so when I ask you, who are you? Don't tell me what car you drive, what job you do. For it will not matter in the storms of life if you don't have an anchor. Are you listening today? Because one of these days, as surely as you live, your wonderful, beautiful, car keys will be in somebody else's pocket. The beautiful house in which you live will become somebody else's in your legacy, whether you made a will or not. Job understood what Christian stewardship is all about. That is the Lord who gives and the Lord who takes. And so you don't hold on to the things of life to give you an identity. Our identity is in Christ. My hope, says the hymn writer, is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. Not the Christ the ATM machine, not Christ the cash machine, not Christ the feel-good factor, not Christ the walking cafeteria, but on Christ the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. A child of God, you must know, and we encourage our children to have degrees, but your degree will not save you in the storms of life and the storm is intensifying i recall years ago while studying at west indies college on mandeville jamaica a few months after i've been there i experienced a storm i never would want to experience elder hurricane gilbert we had the announcement that a storm was coming and i said well i'm from ghana we see storms in Ghana. But I never know there is a storm called, hurricane called Gilbert. And whilst we were in the dormitory, the wind started to gallop and gather velocity. 
In no time, we were told the cafeteria is shut. We had to live on biscuits, crackers, bone and cheese. Our bread and water was assured we couldn't go to the cafeteria. The wind, the storm, moved everything in its path. And out there in the dormitory, we gathered to sing, The lost our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, a weary land, cooling shade from the burning sun. Faithful guide for the pilgrims bind. A shelter in the time of storm. What is this hope we talk about? Paul writing the wonderful chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abides what? Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this, love. Faith and hope sit together. And they all come as a result of our love for Christ Jesus. Who is our hope? Who, in other words, is the anchor? But an anchor is useless if it's just there on the ship. There is a place and property of the anchor. Now you can make a paper anchor, <laughs> but what, would that, what good would that be? when the storms come. You may look like a Christian and sing like a Christian. We are marching to Zion. And you know you're not marching to Zion. We may have the language of the Christian faith and yet not be what we ought to be. When the storm comes and the strong ties leap, the question is, will your anchor hold? The anchor will have to be heavy. The anchor will have to be connected, not just on one side, but on both sides, with the rope or the chain. Uh, this is maritime language I'm using here. Uh, you travel to the city of Liverpool, you see many anchors lying all over the place. Anchors have a purpose. They're not superfluous on the ship. They're there for a reason. When the storms begin to rage, I'm not talking about physical storms. I'm talking about spiritual storms. Storms in our relationships. The storms in our finances. You see, when Job lost everything, he still had his anchor. He could say, the Lord gave and the Lord took. He did not know that Satan was acting behind the scenes with God's permission. Sometimes the anchor is not visible. The rope that ties the anchor is not visible, but it does its work. What I'm saying is that we may all look good. We may have the Bible, happy Sabbath, everybody, <laughs> and we respond. But inwardly, we know that we are not okay. You okay? Yes, but you know you're not okay. When my boys were little, Every one of them you ask, how are you this morning? And they will sincerely tell you how they feel. But then they begin to grow <laughs> and life changes and uh, how are you? I'm fine, but you know they're not fine. You look in their eyes and it's important that we look into people's eyes. Contact, the eye speaks a lot. They may not be okay. And once I was somewhere in Berkshire uh, coming to church, into the sanctuary, I saw a sister walk out. And the way she was walking, 
I said, this sister is on a serious business. I said, where are you going? I said, Pastor, you want to know? I said, that's why I asked the question. She said, I've come here a serious week and people are joking in the sanctuary. I am out of here. And the tears. You understand what I'm saying? This is a serious business. The anchor. I've got five minutes to finish what I have to do. <laughs> the anchor must hold and grip that solid rock. So that, yes, when the anchor is down there, the storms still continue to blow. Many things happen underneath. When the anchor is released, we don't know, we cannot see. But the anchor will hold that ship together. What I'm saying is that we need to be rooted and grounded in the faith. Rooted and grounded in the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Unless we get taken over by the afflictions. By the way, those afflictions are just for a season. They will not last forever. And Paul is saying, I have put them on scales. And one is light. But we have an eternal weight of glory. What do you say? You know, when I was a little boy, my mom would send me to the butchers. And I would go and buy the meat. Those days they had scales, not digital. And they put the meat on one side and find a pound or two according to what you want. Are you with me? Do I have any witnesses today? Are you young people don't know what we know. But you follow soon. But then Paul is saying, I have weighed, I have put the stuff, my afflictions on one side, and I put the grace of God on one side. And the grace of God tips the balance. And I praise him for that. Weeping will not last forever. Joy will come in the morning. But make sure your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. I'm not talking about any other anchor. I'm talking about Jesus. He is the sole anchor. He anchors the soul. And is sure and steadfast. Briefly, quickly. The anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. It means he is reliable. What do you say? He is stable. Uh, he, he does not need the votes of you and I to be who he is. He is immutable. He does not change. Change and decay, the hymn writer says, in all around I see, but thou who changes not. Aren't you comforted that in this day and age where there's so much wickedness and bloodshed and disappointment, left, right, and center, we have a God who never changes. He doesn't change with time or season. I watch, and I believe you also watch with horror, the plight of over 200 girls sleeping in their dormitory somewhere in eastern Nigeria in the night in their pajamas and some people with some ideology go and take these girls by force and so far they've never been found this cannot be home this cannot be home isis decapitating people annihilating the whole tribe this cannot be home watch the streets of our great cities Hi, Alex. This cannot be home. My question is Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the strong ties of evil are pervading our streets, in our very homes, and even in the church today, the love of many waxing cold. 
The spiritual barometer is plummeting, dropping day by day. Uh, people are now questioning the very pillars of our faith today. Coming with all manner of doctrines and light, making doctrines out of one new light they think they have. This cannot be home. Ah, uh, when the pianist sits there, then you know it's time to be quiet. I've got a cue, <laughs> and I'll be quiet. <laughs> the anchor holds. Is sure and steadfast. <laughs> the Bible does not waste words. When he says he's sure, he's reliable, dependent. We can trust him. He's an all-weather man. But then he uses another superlative. He is steadfast. And steadfastness means that you have something within you. And Paul says, greater is he that is in us. And so when I'm buffeted by Satan, there is something within me that does not look at the circumstances. Looks at the circumstances and smile and laugh and says, I've got a high priest on the throne in heaven. Uh, Satan, you can do whatever you want to do in my family, in my place of work, but I have an anchor. And that anchor is connected not to a seabed or a shore, but is connected behind a veil. And that is sanctuary language. I have a, a sanctuary representative, Christ, my intercessor. He ever lives to intercede for us. God is our refuge, says the psalmist, and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Some years ago, I was visiting a hospital. And this dear lady who had been serving the Lord says, Enough is enough. I am tired. No one comes to see me. My life doesn't matter. I'm ready to go home. I heard her, I allowed her to speak, speak, speak. I said, Sister, has God given up on you? Tell me, has he given up on you? And she said, no. I said, well, let God be the judge. Because it is not over until God says it's over. Don't let anybody cremate you before you die. Some of us are living low spiritual lives because of people's opinion on who we are. I don't need, I tell people, people to validate me. If people make you, they will break you. Let God make you. And the storms will come. You have your tears. You face the temptations and the trials. But Jesus himself says, in this world, and sometimes we forget what Jesus has promised us because we don't take time to know the word. In this world, this one called planet Earth, a planet in rebellion against the will of God, you will have what? Tribulations. But be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. And that is what Jesus is saying. The message is this. We have a solid consolation. Read the chapter. We have a solid consolation because Jesus, our high priest, in the sanctuary, in heaven, the most holy place, the last phase of the work of salvation and redemption. But guess what? He is not standing like a priest in the Levitical sanctuary. In there, there was no time to sit down. Uh, the high priest had to go in once in a year. But I'm comforted and glad today that our high priest, I should announce, 
He's sitting on the right hand of God the Father. He's sitting down. Why? Because the work of redemption is almost complete. We are going behind the veil. I cannot see what is happening in heaven, but I have this hope. Uh, this hope does not disappoint. What do you say? The hope of eternal life. That is why God made a promise to Abraham. And we have to patiently wait for the fulfillment as Abraham did. He's mentioned as an example here. Oh, I read the story of um, a snail <laughs> traveling or crawling up. I'm personifying that. So, you know, snails don't crawl, but I'm personifying that. English is not my first or second language, so you understand. But I want to make it sure on record. The snail was walking up, if you please, but was crawling up a guava tree. But halfway through the journey, the snail met a worm who was coming down that same tree. And after exchanging some pleasantries, he said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to where are you coming from? He said, well, I have been there and I'm coming back and I can announce that there are no guava fruits. And the snail said, well, I will press on. For by the time I get there, there will be some guava fruits. <laughs> what I'm saying to us is that we need to be patient. Here is the patience of the saints. Uh, patience is not the ability to tread a needle, but it's to wait upon the promises of God. No matter how long it takes, and young people, uh, don't say, do not say that I've been waiting this long and Mr. Wright hasn't come. So any man in trousers is a man. He may look like a man. And you, you fall for them and say, I'm in love. But watch how you fall. You may not get up. And you will discover, yes, he may look good, have a nice car, maybe even borrowed on credit, high purchase. I'm not knocking high purchase cars, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying, just be patient and wait upon the promise of the Lord. I'm pressing on, the hymn writer says, the upward way. And every day we must gain new heights. And let the Lord lead. And the Christian, discouraged Christians here today? Any discouraged Christian? Don't show your hand. The news is that you have an intercessor. <laughs> I have an intercessor and I've suffered many things in my life and I believe there may be many more to come. <laughs> some more than others. Some true great sorrows. But God leads his dear children along. In this wilderness of war, we have an anchor. I have to take my seat now, but before I do, I just want to share something with you. In his book, Why Revival Terrorists, Leonard Ravenhill has this to say. And folks, hear me now. We need to know how to contact heaven. <laughs> we need to know how to reach to heaven. Because Christ has given us a weapon that pulls down Satan's strongholds. The emotional turmoil, the discouragement that life brings upon us, God has given us the ministry of prayer. Yeah. Reverend Hill says this, no man is greater than his prayer life. Man in gen generic sense, the pastor who is not praying is playing. The people who are not praying are straying. The pulpit can be a shop window to display one's talents. But the prayer closet allows no showing off. It's just me and my God. 
And there he sends his divine x-ray, revealing myself to myself. You know, our troubles and our problems introduces us to ourselves as to who we really are. Did you know that? I learned that lesson in a hard way. Poverty stricken as the church is today in many things. She is most stricken here in the place of prayer. We have many organizers and few organizers. Many players and payers, but few prayers. Many singers, a few clingers. Lots of pastors, few restless. Many fears, few tears. Much fashion, little passion. Many interferers and few intercessors. Many writers, but few fighters. Failing here, we fail everywhere. Oh, but today I'm talking about my Jesus. He holds the anchor. When the strong ties slip and the cable strain, the anchor is sure and steadfast. And then he says he's our forerunner. He's the trailblazer, if you please. He has gone before us. He's scouted the land for us pilgrims to follow in his footsteps. We are pilgrims heading home. The vagabond has no home. The fugitive runs away from home. But we are heading home. Our postcode is in the highest heaven, not in Birmingham or Leicester. My Ghanaian passport or British passport will not take me to heaven. I go to heaven on the account of the shed blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so when life throws its challenge, I know where my anchor is laid. And I have to pray daily, Lord, give me strength that I may endure. Oh, now I've blown my promise. I will not have the blessings now. Blessed is he who shall preach a short sermon, and he shall be, but I'm giving grace here. And I'm going to ask the sisters to come and sing, and we pray. I promised them to sing. I requested for them to sing for me, and listen carefully to the words of this song. We ask for many things in life, but the most important thing has been given us through Jesus Christ. We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hands to ease our suffering, but all the while we hear each desperate plea, yes, love is way too much to give us lesser things, cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise We pray for wisdom, 
your voice to hear. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness. We doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not so much. I don't know where you are, but I know in the assembly of God's people, there are people who are getting ready to get into a storm. And sometimes some are already in the storm, and some are almost coming out of a storm. But I just want to pray with somebody before I take my seat, finally. What if you have disappointments? Or the aching of this life? What if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are actually the messes of God in your life? Have you been betrayed by friends, experiencing disappointments? I've got some news for you. We have this hope that burns within our heart. Hope of the coming of the Lord. The blessed hope. I want to pray with somebody. If you feel the need to, I invite you to get to your feet. And come and let us ask heaven for strength in times like this. If you are here, and the Spirit of God has spoken to you. This is the place. It may well be the last sermon I ever preach. I don't know. It may well be the last sermon you ever hear before the Lord comes. I don't know. But what I know is that heaven hears the call, sees the tears, the fears we have on the inside, fears within and fears without. Heaven knows. He knows my name. My God knows my name. Brother Moore, he knows my name. 
He knows my every care. That is the God I serve. And today, the door is open. I don't know how far you have gone in this life. But I just want to assure you that he is the bread of life when you are hungry. He is the living water when you are thirsty. He is the shepherd who will bring you back home. He is the resurrection and the life. And so, like the hymn writer says, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. You may have all this world, but give me Jesus. It doesn't matter. You may have everything, but if you don't have the sun, you have nothing. Are there some storm survivors here today? The Lord is calling. He's calling you to stand and give yourself storm in your home, storm in your family. The little boy and girl on drugs, you have no answer. Jesus has the answer. He ever lives to intercede. He's speaking every day. There are many, seven billion people in this world. Some have never been prayed for. But you and I are on Christ. Prayer list. He will come true for us. You may have the employer who doesn't want to see your face. I've been there. But God has a plan. Whatever the storm clouds that are gathering or already gathered and blowing over you and you have no answer, God has the answer. I have a savior who is sitting on the throne. He doesn't care, he doesn't, Satan doesn't care how long you have been on the pilgrim path. They will seek to derail and to destroy us. But Christ will raise up a standard. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Whatever. You may pray for some things. They may not happen, but don't worry. In his own time, you'll bring it to pass. And let us pray. Father in heaven, I'm so glad that in heaven, I have a savior and a friend. Our sympathetic high priest, who left the course of glory, the chance of seraphims and seraphims to be on a fallen planet, to reassure us, to hold fast till he comes, and never give up. And in the midst of your people today, there are people who have seen the need of a savior. They need to experience the power that you have in heaven. But I ask that you will work with your people every day assuring us and encouraging us as our trailblazer who has gone on before us to help us to hold on to God's unchanging love and his kindness for us. Uh, give us the spirit of meekness and humility that in due time you will exalt your own people. Or oh, in the workplace, some are going through difficult times. Some are don't even have a job. Or some may even be on the verge of homelessness. Or some may even be fighting in their own homes, not knowing which way to turn. But please reassure them that there is help in the Savior for such a time as this. And I pray that we will not despair, nor fear, nor be disappointed. But we will be encouraged by the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Let us not get weary, but let us trust him. Uh, there may be people who are just for the first time hearing this gospel message. Uh, they need to know you, Christ the anchor. I uh, remind them no matter what they have done, where they have been, you open the life gate that all may go in. And that the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus receives a pardon from you. Oh Lord, may you cleanse us from within and without. And I pray for the entire church community. We ask that you make us real. That we will not put on a form of godliness denying the power thereof. For you would one day do a separation of the sheep and goats. 
May we be on the right side when you shall come. We long to hear your well done, that good and faithful servant. May this wonderful accolade remind us that this is not home. We are homeward bound. Our home is in the highest heaven. Bless us to this and we pray with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.